Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Anvil Quested. I am Marcus Aurelius, and in today's episode, we are going to have to deal with some military and political matters. First of all, in the past three years, we have been approached by the diplomat from the Mountain Homes asking us to name a baron and become a barony of our civilization. And we have said no each time because nobles are kind of a pain in the ass and they request things and they're moody and they're useless. But I'm having a severe leather shortage, even slaughtering all my superfluous dogs, turkeys, and I'm trying to raise yaks has not yielded me anywhere near as much leather as I need to outfit my entire military, which means we have people running around in full steel plate armor, but no leather underneath, which is what well, really chafes. And so I don't want to put my dwarves through that any longer. So we are going to, in this episode, nominate a baron. And let me tell you how this is going to work. Everyone in the fortress with the exception of active military, is available. So we're going to do a random number to determine who gets to be the Baron, and I'm going to look them over with you guys on camera. And if they have a like that is incompatible with our fortress, say they like something like nest boxes or something that I don't want 10,000 of, then they are going to get skipped, and I will make that determination. But if we find somebody who likes something that we are going to be producing a lot of anyway, such as uh, bolts or something, then then that's cool. I will go with that. Or some form of armor. That would be fine too. Because the thing is, they desire that you produce them almost constantly, and they don't allow you to trade them. So it's got to be something that we want to produce a lot of, but won't necessarily be trading in order to keep the Baron happy. So that's how we're going to do that. We are also... Because in previous episodes we lost a lot of troops and we had to replace them with basically fresh recruits who have no training whatsoever, I have decided to start a new 10-man reserve military squad. Now they will be active military in the sense that they will be training all the time. They will not be pursuing civilian lives, but they will not be involved in any of our military maneuvers. They will simply be training and nothing else. Then. If we were to lose a dwarf in one of our active military squads, they will be replaced by one of the trainees who, by the time they need to be replaced, will probably have high levels of skill. And as a result, we won't have to have complete newbies who don't even know a helmet from a carp on our squads, which unfortunately we have to deal with right now. So we're going to be also press ganging nine of them from the unassigned. Now we have 100 unassigned in the fortress, so that'll be a 10% reduction in labor, which should be acceptable. We should be able to absorb that, especially since I'm going to stop mining as much as I have in the past, because we have plenty of metal, I think, at this point. And so that'll require less hauling jobs and things of that nature. So that's how it's going to work, ladies and gentlemen. But first, before we proceed any further, let's profile a dwarf. Where are you? There we go. All right, so we currently have 163 named dwarves, and that includes our dead. So if we get one of them, we're just going to skip them. Oh, also, Silver Haze asked if I could state how many kills Silver Haze had, and I'm very sorry. I checked the Legends mode, and unfortunately, the game only records notable kills, that is, kills of named enemies. And as a result, it didn't list any kills under Silver Blades. Uh, Silver Haze, I'm sorry, Silver Haze. And that sucks, because in the game itself, while you're alive, it does tell you how many kills you have, even if one of those kills is a snake or a chinchilla man. So I don't understand what would be so hard about the Legends view being able to export, at least for the dwarves in your own fortress, all of their minor kills. But it does not. So unfortunately, Silver Haze, I am sorry to say that the Legends mode currently says that you have zero notable kills. And uh, sorry about that, man. But you did kill quite a few. All right, number 43. Bavette Argon. I don't know why. I feel like we've, we've done Bavette already, but I must not have. All right. Bavette Argon is in the military. 
and has one notable kill, Osnan Black Reigns the Goblin, and three other kills, uh, two Goblin Men and one Goblin Woman. And that's the weirdest thing. These symbols don't make sense to me because you would think that the pointy object would be a man and the bag, which is like a object you put things in, would be a woman, but it is not the case. They are the opposite. So this is a woman, this is a man, and I could not tell you why. But those are the kills of Bevet Argon. Bevet is the husband of the Etruscan, who is one of our engravers, is the father of Urus Mikado, another of our engravers, in fact, a superior engraver to his mother, and the father of Sanctum Stone, who is also in our military. A number of other family members, but they are not in the fortress. Mateos is his younger sister. Narian Wolf is his aunt. Jan is his uncle. Catnip is his niece. Mina Moonheart is also his niece. JC Destroyer is his nephew. Bucephalus is his nephew. Bloodrune the second, deceased, I wish they would say that, is his nephew. Haas the third, still living, is his nephew, along with Leverquin. And then Blue Blunderbuss, Lady Atti, P Doggy 14, are cousins. And he's on friendly terms with a lot of people, but no enemies. That's great. All right, on to Therapist, where we shall find Bavette. There we are. Oh, come on. There. Come on. Okay, what is the problem here? This is, this is kind of pissing me off. Bavette. All right, I'm just going to leave the mouse where it is. Bavette is the squad leader of Bavette's Big Sticks. So, a militia captain, within the last week he felt horrified after witnessing death five times, relieved to have his punishment delayed, annoyed after sleeping on a rough cave floor, afraid after experiencing trauma, nothing while in conflict, and pleasure after a sparring session. So, Bavette is a mixed bag. He enjoys sparring, feels nothing at all while in combat, but afterwards, when he thinks back upon the experiences that he had, he is horrified and afraid. And of course, relieved to not be put in jail for probably not producing something the mayor of Surreal Beliefs requested back when he was a civilian. Within the last season, he felt bliss after sleeping in a great bedroom and satisfied upon becoming a master shield user. Now this is good. I need more master and legendary shield users. So he has a legendary plus five spear dwarf, a legendary plus five discipline, legendary plus five observer, legendary plus five fighter, legendary plus one shield user, legendary plus one pump operator, I wonder why on earth he would get in trouble for not producing something. He's adept at wrestling, talented at dodging. See, we need better dodgers, though. Somehow they need to get better at dodging. And he's only a talented armor user. He's a proficient striker, competent kicker, and an adequate miscellaneous object user. Whatever the heck that means. Okay, come on. Please work for me. Please work for me. All right, good. Don't know what happened there. Highest mutable skill is minor. He desires little for himself in the way of possessions. He is pleased by his own appearance and talents. He is grateful when others help him out and tries to return the favor. He tends not to reveal personal information. He is somewhat uncomfortable around those that seem unusual or live differently. No surprise, he is a straight male. He uh, finds helping others emotionally rewarding. He is assertive. He has an active imagination but he does not really value skill related to fighting despite being a militia captain. Perhaps he was a bad choice. He believes that perseverance is a great personal quality, and he dreams of mastering a skill, and this dream was realized. So you've achieved your dreams, Pavet Argon. That's amazing. He likes green tourmaline, bismuth, marcasite, stoat men, blue peafowls, and male shirts. He prefers to consume honeybee honey, gutter cruor, glass eye, and kakapo. He hates blood gnats. Now the one thing that Therapist does not do very well, that the game itself does better, is saying why they like things. So for example, it says here that he likes blue peafowls for their coloration 
and stoatmen for their ability to take down large prey. See, that doesn't, doesn't say that in Therapist, which is kind of lame. So that is Bavette Argon. So now, now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to find a mayor. So let's take a look at all of our dwarves here. And again, active military are exempted. I don't really know why. I don't know if a noble can be in the military, like if they will follow your orders or do their own thing. I've heard of people on the forums say that military dwarves are the dukes or whatnot. And in many cases, they, they say it's a good thing because they become so used to horrific combat that they don't care about anything anymore. And as a result, they don't get angry. Of course, nobody in this fort gets angry because I've been pumping happy gas into the walls, or in other words, using Diapak. <laughs> But, okay, but anyways, let the lottery begin. So, dun dun dun. Okay, so, 163 is fine. And actually, let's throw up Therapist to make this happen. And let's go with Squads. And the training squad, by the way, will be led by Lady Awesomeness. And the name of the squad will be the Awesome Possums. Okay. Number 56. Brunor Battlehammer. Oh, I can just do it this way. Alright, Brunor Battlehammer. He is an animalist, so we have to replace him. Hmm, he likes lion... So he doesn't like anything... He doesn't like any objects. He likes acacia wood, brown jasper, copper, sphalerite, lynx, llamas, and the color ivory. So he doesn't actually like an object. I wonder if that... I wonder if that will do anything. Maybe he'd make the best mayor. Let's see here. Runor Battlehammer. Okay. He likes the links for their ear tests. When possible, she, oh, it's a she, so it'd be a Baroness, to consume Kia, Soul, and Dwarven beer. We can make Dwarven beer. We cannot make. Well, we can buy Kia, I guess. And there's plenty of Kias floating around. I'm sure we could. We can work something out. Soul, though, we're going to have to trade for. But that's what we're naming a Baroness for. She's married to Krom the Historian, who's one of our... who makes our statues. And she's the daughter of Stodier Tipsmiths and Walder the Old. Ah, so she's a Frey. <laughs> Let's see. She has a great deal of patience and a good intellect, so actually would make quite a good Baroness. She has poor focus, an iffy memory, and little natural inclination toward music. That's okay. Great deal of respect for the law. Well, that's good. Prizes loyalty. Values family greatly. Sees friendship as one of the finer things in life. So she will be... Oh, believes in honesty. Really respects those that take the time to master a skill. Deeply respects those that work hard. Respects fair dealing and fair play. That's it. I'm sold. I am sold. Brunor Battlehammer, you are a fantastic Baron. You would make a Baroness. You would make a wonderful... Baroness. You don't like fighting, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm in control of the military. She's very slow to anger. She does dislike helping others. Hmm. She is bashful. She has a tendency to go it alone without considering the advice of others. That's not ideal. She can handle stress, though. That's good. She likes to keep things practical. Again, very good. She's quick to form negative views. Well, that's not good. She exhales slowly and deliberately when she starts getting bored. Okay, Brunor, I don't see any reason not to name you the Baroness. And if you displease us, if you desire something that doesn't appear here and we can't produce it for you, we will simply lock you in your room to die. And that will still help us because the Diplomat will still keep coming, even though our Baroness has perished. Although maybe, maybe if she were to pass on, Krom the Historian would become the Baron. 
I don't know if that works. Or if it's the child that they don't have. I don't know. Her latest emotional thing is, don't bother trying to play on my emotions. <laughs> She's gloomy at being out in the sunshine. That's not how it's supposed to work. <laughs> okay. All right, that's fine. So, when the time comes, we're not there yet, but when the time comes in the fall, we're going to name Brunor Battlehammer as our Baroness. And I'm just writing that down here. Okay. Quick look at the relationships. The wife of Krom, the daughter of Walder the Old, the older or the younger sister of Silverhaze the Second, who is alive, the niece of Lady Git. So this will be the new royal family. The niece of Karagor Kvelcharn, the aunt of Olin, the aunt of Dwarf Comic, the cousin of Grumzub and King Tip. Now let's see if she doesn't like anybody. No enemies. Okay, great. Perfect. Brunor, you are a Baroness. Congratulations. All right. Now back to Therapist and the Randomizer. So for adopting into the military, I have two rules. One, they have to be unassigned. And two, they cannot be a second coming. So I will not anymore allow someone who is already in the military to be in the military again. Simple rules. But there are 55 of those people that fit that criteria. Wait, 56. Did I accidentally push generate? Oh, no. Bruno Brandel Harbor is 56, right? Right, 43 is Babette Argon. Understood. Okay. 55, let's go for it. Number seven, Hawat Red Lips. Hawat Red Lips, you are drafted into the military. Into the awesome possums. Oh, I need to read the dwarves. Okay. Hawat Red Lips. Cracker, why are you orange? Oh, Chief Medical Dwarf, right. Oh, right, 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 right. Hold on. Let's go to profession. Oops, not military status profession and go down to our unassigned all right how about red lips you are now a member of the awesome possums may you serve us well and by the way in terms of their weapons i'll look and see if they have a preference but if not i'll have two squad members of each weapon type i'm not sure if i'm gonna have mark swords in the squad yet or not or how that would even work so i'll think about that 52. Dopey. Dopey, the only dwarf on our team that has a relationship with Snow White. I really, I can't alphabetize it, really. <sighs> Whatever. No, not D0. D-O. Dog? What? I don't know why, but Dwarf Therapist is just giving me giving me a lot of crap today. Oh, for crying out loud. You know what? Let's just screw it. Let's just do it alphabetized. I know who's unassigned and who's not. Alright, Dopey. You're in. Awesome possums. Next, we have... 45. 45 is Steingrim. Gosh, I have a lot of dwarves, don't I? Steingrim. Awesome possums. Okay. Next. 33. Oh ho ho! Dwarf comic. You have joined the military of Anvil Quested. So you'll have to take time off from your artwork to defend us in our time of need. All right, so the awesome possums are at half strength. Moving on. 38, Leonard Yeldra. Welcome to the awesome possums. 
Okay. 34. Haunter. Haunter. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. I kind of said it like a ghost. Haunter. Okay, moving on. <laughs> um, number 45. We already did that. It's Steingrim. 21. Lucky 21 is Tim Tebow. Who's here somewhere? Tim Tebow. Okay, eight members so far, so we need two more. Number nine. Lucky number nine, Cameron. Goodness gracious, I have a lot of dwarfs. Cameron. Awesome possums. Okay, and our final awesome possum. Number 19. Number 19 is Yeen's Beans. All the way down at the bottom. Yeans beans. Awesome possums. All right, so let's look at our new squad. The awesome possums, led by Lady Awesomeness, Howitt Wedlips, Dopey, Steingrim, Dwarf Comic, Leonard Yeldra, Haunter, Tim Tebow, Cameron, and Yeans beans. So if you pause the screen at strategic moments, you'll be able to see the information on all of these folks. Okay, cool stuff. So they will start training immediately. Again, I will. none of them have any particular type of weapon desire, weapon proficiency, so I will simply just assign weapons to them based on need. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so, though we haven't actually played the game in this episode, we have named a Baron for when the time comes in about six months or so, five months, and we have selected our reserve squad. So once again, I am Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.